Coming up, Disney and Lucasfilm have announced a new Star Wars animated series. A ground has been broken for Avatar Land at Disney's Animal Kingdom. And we have news about the Four Seasons Resort opening at Walt Disney World. And later on, we'll be joined by Aaron Del Prince and Chris Walters, uh, who are going to share with us their experience the uh, uh, at the Walt Disney World Marathon Weekend. All that coming up from the Bob Varley Studio here in Orlando, Florida. This is the Diz Unplugged. This is the Diz Unplugged, episode 669 for the week of January 14th, 2014. The Diz Unplugged is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, experts at helping you plan the perfect Disney vacation. Visit them on the web at www.dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Diz Unplugged, coming to you live from the Bob Barley Studio here in Orlando, Florida. I am your host, Dustin West, and I am joined at the table this week by my good friends, John Magi. Kevin Close, Teresa Eccles, Kathy Whirling, <laughs> and back in the production nook, we have Craig Williams and Sean Thompson, our associate producers. Well, again, uh, welcome to the Diz Unplugged, and uh, I am Dustin West. I am not Pete Werner, who is your usual host. He has some other uh, things he's attending to today, but he will be here next week, um, so we're looking forward to that, but... Uh, we have, uh, we have a very interesting show for you guys today. Like I said, we're going to have some guests on later today, uh, Chris Walters and Aaron Del Prince, who have just run the uh, Disney Marathon. In fact, I think they might have done multiple races, but they're going to uh, join us uh, later for that. Do I get to leave before Chris gets here? Uh, no, no. He's, he's going to come and he's going to... You can get to leave. That's rude. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, get to leave. Oh, you get to leave. <laughs> Yeah. No, okay. we love John and I have so much to talk about <laughs> about the marathon. Right, exactly. No, we love Chris and Aaron. How oh, great. I do love Aaron. He's sweet. Yeah, I'm excited for them to get here. I, I don't know when they're going to get here. I'm going to try to keep an eye out for them, but otherwise they might just have to wait outside. Standing outside the green will not kill them. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> but uh, uh, before we move along, I uh, you know just wanted to uh, mention a few things that we do have in housekeeping this week of course if you guys haven't uh checked it out yet make sure you go and visit our uh youtube page our username is wdw info that's the diz on youtube and you can you can find that in our uh, show notes page at uh, www.dizunplugged.com uh and you'll find all kinds of videos that uh we've been doing lately uh later on in this episode we're going to have some information from sean and craig who have uh took a look at uh, the new Spice Road table over at Morocco. It's the new restaurant that opened up, and Craig's put up a video for that. So, again, if you want to keep up to date uh, with all the videos that we have, you can go uh, check out our YouTube page. And, again, our username is WDW Info uh, when, you search, when you search on YouTube. Um, I've got some other things, but uh, I, have to, I have to look at all my, uh, on my email. Does anybody else have any housekeeping while I'm doing that? Uh, oh, I, it looks like we're all going to say something. We all looked at each okay. other. Look at, go back to, um, don't look at me, look at um, Dustin. That's my name. <laughs> look Thank at you. Dustin. I'm Put Dustin, Dustin up there. Put That's Dustin John. Up there. I'm John. Look at the little funky Mickey staring at him and judging him from over his, no, no, turn around. You can't look at him. Yeah, he's like looking oh. at you weird. Has he always yeah. been sitting there? He has been sitting well, there Well, cut for to a me. While. I have Darth Vader looking over my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> I, was okay. I just hadn't been here in so long. It's just, I know it's, it's been a while. Has it, did everybody have a good uh, Christmas break and mm-hmm. New Year's? I did. Yeah, yeah. We should have taken January off too. We should have. <laughs> <laughs> it's this winter weather is just pulling me down. Well, I want to say thank you to everybody who <laughs> sent warm wishes and congratulations for my new granddaughter that was born Sunday night. Persephone Fox Whirling. She's. Eight pounds, ten ounces. She was coming home from the hospital today. So thank you, everybody, for your kind Aww. thoughts. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Grandma. Grandma. Mm. I still don't feel old enough to be a grandma. But oh, I'm this sure is number kids. four, right? Yeah. Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. I'll never see grandchildren. You'll never see grandchildren. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that's indicative of. Your children will never... Or they won't show them. I to won't you. live to be that old. I, don't know. <laughs> I thought you meant they were going to hide them from you. Really? Don't worry. Oh, that too, probably. <laughs> It'll come. Well, It'll happen. Yeah. 
20 years from now, maybe. Well, congratulations, Kathy. Thank that's, you. that's really good news. I know you've been, you were on, uh, you were on baby alert for a yes, while. You know, yes. you weren't sure when it was going to happen. And it's nice now to sort of have like a normal life because like, <laughs> like how I worked, it's like I might be called away at any minute. So now it's yeah. nice. I can just sit down and do what I need to do and know the baby's here and she's fine. So. Yeah. Excellent. Right. Did your email come up yet? Because yes, I'm tired of vamping. Okay. <laughs> oh. It's like we haven't got our wow. groove back. No, I, I just... blame Stella. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to mention if you're... Uh, you know, want to check out the Diz Unplugged uh, Disneyland edition this week on Thursday and their upcoming show. Uh, Tony Spatel is going to have a review of the Tangerine Grill at the Annabella Hotel. And Michael Bowling talks about a recent tribute to Annette Funicello uh, that was held at the Walt Disney Family Museum. Again, if you want to check out the Diz Unplugged Disneyland edition, you can go to DizUnplugged.com. And you can see their show notes there. You can also go to iTunes and subscribe to the uh, Disneyland edition of the Diz Unplugged. Um, and I also have a, a few other things. You know, um, we have a few meets coming up um, for uh, Give Kids the World. And um, let me see if I can let me see if I can find those. Oh, you got them right here. Oh, <laughs> uh, you do. Okay, yeah. Uh, it's uh, Chicago, uh, Illinois will be held the weekend of January 19th. I think that one's actually it's been, been canceled. canceled yeah. It's been canceled? Mm-hmm. Okay, I apologize. Uh, North Texas uh, is going to be held on March 22nd. Uh, New Jersey meet for Give Kids the World is going to be April 25th through the 27th. Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, June 13th through the 15th. And the New England meet is October 3rd through the 5th in 2014. Again, this is an incomplete list. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's going to be some more additions to that list. Yeah, Delaware, Nova Scotia. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, definitely uh, go to uh, disboards.com. If you go under to the the Diz Unplugged podcast forum for uh, disboards.com, you can find all the uh, Give Kids the World uh, uh, Disboards meets that are happening uh, this year. So... That's my housekeeping. All right. I actually have a housekeeping, too. I just want to mention that today and tomorrow are the very last days that you can pre-order the Diz hashtag shirt. So the 14th and the 15th. So tomorrow night, the store will close. So we've links to that all over the site on DizUnplugged.com. Every single page has a little graphic uh, that you can click on. But tomorrow's the last day, so make sure you get your orders in. Store closes and you fold the shirts all up. I know. (laughs) It's like the gap. I need to order one, you know? Yeah. It's a a cool shirt. But hurry up. Yeah. Store's closing. Does anybody else have anything for housekeeping? Fire sale. Oh my God, we're having a fire sale. <laughs> That's an arrest development. Uh, okay, anyway. Does anybody else have anything for housekeeping? Not that I can remember. Stop Not that- asking us. Okay. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> then I will uh, move it over to John Magi with the news this week. Excellent. Our first news story new animated series, Star Wars Rebels, coming fall of 2014. I know Kevin can't wait. Can't. I've set the diva. Star Wars Rebels, an exciting all-new animated television series based on one of the greatest entertainment franchises of all time, is scheduled to premiere this fall as a one-hour special telecast on Disney Channel and will be followed by a series on Disney XD channels around the world. The action-filled series is set between the events of Episode 3 and 4, an era spanning almost two decades, never before explored on screen. Star Wars Rebels takes place in a time where the Empire is securing its grip on the galaxy and hunting down the last of the Jedi Knights as a fledgling rebellion against the Empire is taking shape. In other words, for those of us who don't know what that means, it covers the events leading up to the very first 1977 Star Wars film, the original one. Star Wars fans are very excited to hear that Star Wars Rebels will feature stormtroopers as regular characters. The prequel films and cartoon networks The Clone Wars mainly cast clone troopers. Oh, my God. I see the difference. Can you say that? (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Front and center is the show's toothy new bad guy, the Inquisitor. He's toothy? He's toothy. He's been asked by the Emperor. He's been tasked by the Emperor with hunting down the remaining Jedi Knights. Okay. Excited, Teresa? I am. I'm actually excited about it. I'm being a goof. I think it yeah. sounds like it's going to be cool. No, I know. So that it's the years between the two sets of Remember movies. Remember the very right. first movie? Yeah. It's supposed to take place right before the very first movie that came out. The, the fact that it's called Star Wars Rebels leads me to believe that it's going to be the buildup of how the Rebel Alliance was formed and stuff like that. And, you know, 
when uh, Disney first purchased Lucasfilm, there was talks that there might be live action uh, television shows coming in place that would take place in this uh, time period. But, it, uh, you know, of course they're going to go the uh, animated route on Disney Live XD. action would be cute, like Young Indiana Jones. Remember those? When yes, I do remember that. That would be cool. Um, okay, well, I have something else that might excite you okay. about this. I just read this this morning. It says reportedly, so I'm going to list this as a rumor. Okay. But supposedly, Disney Imagineers are going to remodel Tomorrowland in Disneyland. And it's all going to be based on Star Wars. And they've been given access to information from Episode 7, so that can be included. And it will be ready 18 months after the start of the... The first, the next movie. And okay. this is what they said. Imagineers assigned to the Star Wars Tomorrowland projects have been debriefed on the characters and plot lines coming for Star Wars Episode 7 that opens in theaters in about two years. The original plan for Disneyland's Tomorrowland relied heavily on characters and plot points from the first three Star Wars films with attractions like a Millennium Falcon walkthrough on the old People Mover platform, a oh, wild no. Tatooine camera or ta- cantina replacing Tomorrowland Terrace and a speeder bike ride through the Ewok Village where Autopia currently sits. Yeah. These key attractions are all still part of Phase 2, but they are being layered or tweaked to include references from Episode 7 that will be released in theaters at least 18 months before any of those attractions open. Who said this? Okay. It was on Perez Hilton. This is I saw a lot of scrunched up faces when Kevin read yeah. this. Oh, no. They now, can't do this. Now, I understand <laughs> everything you're describing to me sounds really cool. I just wish it wasn't in Tomorrowland no, at no. Disneyland. Yeah. I, again, I have. N- I read it on Tomorrowland Disneyland or this here. Is a rumor. Disneyland. Disneyland. But either way, it doesn't matter. They right. shouldn't do this. That's taking that's taking the Magic Kingdom and throwing in a third party. Um, you know, take uh, away the theme, new Smurf you know? thing they're doing. Smurf. Oh, that's not who are the blue people. Avatar. 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 Yeah. Take away that and. <laughs> Don't mess with Tomorrowland. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that kind of... Smurfs don't ride those eagles with horse tails. <laughs> Silly. This Sean, is... what, do you, what do you think? Oh, you're... I hate this. Oh, man, he had a visceral yeah. reaction. He did. I, thought he was little... I, I have no connection to Star Wars, um, so I think it's a waste. I, I love Star Wars. I think Tomorrowland really needs help. I, I do, but this yeah. seems... Do you think it uh, does? I think it's yeah. very hard at this point to think of a Tomorrowland. In the 60s, we had that sort of rocket thing that focused us on uh, Tomorrowland. Yeah. At this point, what would you envision for tomorrow? No, what yeah. I like about Tomorrowland is it's the Tomorrowland they thought it was. It's exactly. retro yeah. Tomorrowland. It's retro, and that's so what I like really about Tomorrowland. it. It's yes to Tomorrowland. It's, it's, yeah, it's retro Tomorrowland. And, and I, I like that. Don't get me wrong. I had heart failure when they took down that sort of retro uh, security check in front of Fort Wilderness. So I like that old Tomorrowland look, that whitewashed yeah. kind of... I loved it. So I agree with you. I love the retro look of it. However, I think from their point, when Tomorrowland was first built, we had that whole let's explore space thing. Yeah. And we were all going to live on Mars in a bubble. And that's, the Jetsons. Right. That was my plan. And we've now passed where that was supposed to have happened. And luckily there's, you know, or luckily, what I don't mean luckily, there's been no bubble. And for the foreseeable future, none of us are expecting to live on another planet. So we don't have that sort of big vision of what tomorrow's going to look like. No, we do, now. but it's all gloom and doom, so, so they can't it's, do that. It's an interesting concept. Well, like I said, I, I loved everything that you were describing. I think it just fits better in something like Hollywood Studios than maybe Tomorrowland yeah. in, in Disneyland, because to bring in that kind of the, you know, they've already brought in Star Tours to Tomorrowland there. and But that doesn't, you know, make its way into the rest of the theme of Tomorrowland to have that whole space be uh, just Star Wars. This is themed. upsetting. You know, is this yeah. upsetting you, John? Should Very we stop? Much. And I think I need to go down? home. This is Lots just water. <laughs> but but it's weird because it's kind of like a, a 50-50 thing for me because I do love Star Wars. Oh, I do too. But I also love what Disneyland and Tomorrowland is all about out at that park. There's a I just want to clarify something. This is not a new land in Disneyland. Yeah. This is taking Over. existing Tomorrowland and doing the Star Wars Overlay, update, overlay right. and and what they're talking about makes sense. They're it sounds like they're using that space you know, correctly. If they're, if they're, oh, going, stop. It doesn't make sense. No, if, well, I'm just but saying. Things like Autopia, re- retrofitting that to be something that's a little bit more quote unquote current that doesn't just sort of feel like they plop this racetrack in the middle of yeah. the park. That seems like the right move to make, but is it Star Wars? And the other thing, too, is, right. is Star Wars really 
a Tomorrowland thing. Star Wars is still a, a moment in time. Yeah. It's not the future of the Earth. You know, so to so to make that as the Tomorrowland of people here on Earth, it seems a little weird. Yeah. I agree. I think all these things sound cool, but I don't think it should be put it in be the magic future. Kingdom. There should be like Please note that Planet of the Apes online, world or something. Right. It says reportedly. Right. I just thought it was a very cool rumor that would you know sort of spark discussion. Look what it's done. Now, before we move on, John, I do want to bring it back to the Star Wars Rebels uh, TV show that. You know they're uh, announcing for 2014. I think this is a, a a really a really cool idea because you know I as a Star Wars fan I was never as a Star Wars fan that's an adult I was never really into the Clone Wars animated series. It felt like you know that took place between episodes two and three and it felt more directed towards children. Uh, this, however, is leading up to the events of the original trilogy, and I think a lot more adults might find this appealing, even though it is in an animated version, uh, than maybe the original Clone Wars animated series. Well, I also series. think the information... I'm not, I'm, I don't have any connection to Star Wars either. I saw mm-hmm. the first one, and I watched one of those in Terminal new ones. Um, they all looked exactly alike uh-huh. in the movie, too. Uh, but I think... The first movie in the seventies, that was such a culture shock that like everybody knew about it. So I think the idea of getting information about how those characters started, yeah, I think I'm agreeing with what you just said in different words. I think it's going to appeal to people. I watched yeah. the Clone Wars, and the problem with that was I think there wasn't enough stories to tell. It's a lot of action. It was a lot of action. It was fun and was well done. I think this has a lot more places where stories can be told. Right. Character development, things can come along. Um, also, the, the stills we saw from it looked incredible, so I'm excited for that. And also excited for the new movie, so yeah, I'm a Star Wars geek. I can't wait to hear, uh, find out more news for that. You know, I canceled my subscription to Star Wars Insider, the magazine, once episode three came out, so now I have more to look forward to. Maybe I can resubscribe. <laughs> you get a Star Wars magazine? Yeah. That's cute. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. All right. Thanks, John. All right. Our next news story. Teresa actually touched on this before. Construction begins for new Avatar-inspired land at Disney's Animal Kingdom. Earlier last week, leaders from Walt Disney Parks and Resorts and Lightstorm Entertainment kicked off the largest, largest expansion in Disney's Animal Kingdom history, with a ceremonial groundbreaking for the park's new Avatar-inspired land with the blue Navi-inspired shovels. Oh, we don't have that picture? Oh, yeah. Uh, they were pretty. There's a picture of, yeah. Giant. Of yeah, shovels. big. They were Joe Rody with yeah. a giant blue shovel. <laughs> a giant shovel. was cute. The area, which is being designed by Walt Disney Imagineering in partnership with Avatar creator James Cameron and Lightstorm Entertainment, will be unlike anything ever experienced at a Disney park. Guests will experience the wonders of Pandora when they fly with banshees and explore a rich natural environment with mountains that float and interactive plants that glow at night. Quote, Disney's Animal Kingdom is already home for some of our guests' favorite attractions, said Tom Skaggs. With Avatar, we are adding a spectacular new world and an exciting set of attractions unlike any our guests have experienced. The expansion now underway will make the park a true full-day must see experience. Interesting that he uses the words it will make it a full day yeah. experience. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of I yeah. think it's like they realize that well there's that picture. Yeah. They hate it so much. <laughs> I think it's so funny. Joe Rody and That's the guy from Avatar. Joe Rody's on the end. Yeah. Right? Who's the dude in the purple shirt? I think it's a woman. Oh, he's an imagineer. It's not well, a, that's a man. I, I, I've seen him on... Uh, I, that's I a woman over here in the name. green. Which ones are we talking about? The guy in the blue, purple shirt, is actually expand. from uh, James Cameron's yeah. camp. camp. The one oh, he's not, J- James Cameron's not there? No, he's not in James the James Cameron's the tall one in the middle. That's what yeah. I thought. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a cute, cute picture. Yeah. I don't know about Avatar Land. This is one of those things I'm ambivalent about. Again, it was an okay movie. I liked it. But I don't know if I next one better be good. I am excited about this. Are you really? Yes, I am excited about this. I don't, you know, I understand that even though the the two sequels seem far out in the distant future, and it's kind of hard to wrap your head around that. I do feel like um, that the original Avatar movie and the the world that that creates uh, fits itself perfectly into Animal Kingdom, and it does 
uh, offer the opportunity to make Animal Kingdom even more of a full day park, especially a nighttime park in that sense. Uh, I, I already feel like you Animal Kingdom. You think they're going to keep those critters up at night? No, no. I think that, you know, any of their nighttime stuff is going to be in the areas where there's not animals. <laughs> so, it's gonna be, caffeine. <laughs> so it's going to be like Epcot where like Future World clo- used to close earlier right. and then everybody went to World Showcase. Do right. you get Avatar monthly newsletter? I, I do. I do, actually. <laughs> Thanks. Navi Weekly. No. <laughs> Just wondering. You know, Stop subscribing to it. I don't know what his mail looks like. You know, a- <laughs> you know Asia and, <laughs> and Dino Land and... And now Avatar Land are are prime for being open at night. I mean, I've ridden Expedition Everest after the sun goes down, and that's an experience that's really hard to come by, and it's really awesome. Oh, you can do it at a big thunder. So where is this going to be within when I walk in the front of the park? This would be where Camp Mini Mickey was. Oh, they're taking that. That's all gone. Yeah, so right when you go into the park, it's on the, the left side before you get to Africa. And, of course, there's also talks about them adding a, a nighttime show um, at Animal Kingdom. So this this is all part of a bigger expansion for Animal Kingdom. And I'm, I'm really excited about it. And I'm glad to finally hear that they're breaking ground. Now, did I ever tell you guys a story about how I met Joe Rohde and James Cameron at the same time? Oh, Lord. Is this a real story? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I'm interested in that. What did you have on your salad? He was reading salad? Star Wars magazine. <laughs> yes. I was reading Star Wars Insider, and I looked up, and guess who it was? No, I was working at Expedition Everest at the time, and uh, we had closed for the day, and they had just announced Avatar Land maybe a week or two before. And... Um, we, we closed the attraction now, but we were still running it for some reason. We didn't know why. We're just going to keep running it. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm working at the exit of the attraction where you say, you know, all right, everybody, exit this way. Right. Go look at your photo. And uh, we're running a few empty trains over and over again. And then one comes with two people sitting in the front row. And it's like in slow motion, I go, oh, my God, that's Joe Rohde and James Cameron riding, you know, my roller coaster. But it's really his roller coaster. But um, it was awesome. And then, uh, you know, they got out and they talked for like 15 minutes. You right know, about, there in front of you? Well, about like 10 feet away from me because uh, um, Joe Rohde wanted to bring James Cameron onto Expedition Everest to show, you know, what the Disney level of theming is, you know, Um the Too little thing, thing doesn't didn't work. work. Yeah. <laughs> Just the ig- ignore the Yeti. Ignore the Yeti. Imagine this really cool thing now. <laughs> All the crap in uh, your land will work fine. Um, but that was that's that, interesting. That was definitely a geek moment for me. Oh yeah. Uh, as a you know, as a huge film buff and as a huge Disney uh, uh, enthusiast, that was a, a really cool moment for me. So I'm glad that you know that paid off. That they're finally that they're finally breaking ground. We have to explain to Kathleen that opening Pandora doesn't mean those little beads. <laughs> what? <laughs> Pandora Land isn't about a bracelet. Oh. Um, yeah, again, I'm again. I like the movie. Movie was great. I have, I think I have almost the same feeling about this that I have about changing Tomorrowland. Mm-hmm. I don't think it fits. Okay. I just don't think that. I think Animal Kingdom should be about animals. Yeah. Not about I, floating I, mountains. I highly What's doubt the there will be animals on display in this yeah. area. Well, I think in that sense, it kind of fits in the kind of message that the movie has about conservation and kind of not doing things that kind of hurt, you know, the world that we're living in. So that kind of fits. And Animal Kingdom has always been about kind of that and how to keep up with, you know, recycling and environmentality and all that kind of stuff. Avatar recycles. Absolutely. Is it another planet? Is it this planet in the future? What is Avatar? No, it's a different planet. It's Pandora is the planet. planet. It's where Sigourney Weaver lives. Oh. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Well, she lives now. Yeah. She used to live in Alien. I was going to say, I'm skeptical of this till I see the buildings there that they've started doing this Mm -hmm. because this project reminds me of downtown Disney when they were going to make it this Hyperion Wharf and they were going to do this and everybody got all excited I just picture the Imagineers sitting there going I don't know if this is going to work or not so it's like when I see buildings going up that's going to be something then however that picture with the big blue shovels that's kind of like they, that's a commitment. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's I mean, like, they're paint them blue. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot of money to spend. It if looks you're not the picture it. behind you, John, is pretty. I mean, it's all fanciful and it looks really pretty. So I think they're going to make it look pretty, I, I, and that's enough. I think if for me as a Disney fan, that's enough. I don't have to buy into the whole movie. I think if they do something that's this technologically advanced, I don't know that I'm impressed about the fact that the flowers in the ground are going to light up. You can do that walking out of Epcot right now, and that's concrete. Yeah. So 
I, I think to myself, I will be impressed if they do things that are technologically advanced. Anything that makes your jaw drop and you go, ooh, is a, fun, is a good addition. Now, see, this is the one movie, because everybody knows that I don't usually, I haven't watched most of the Disney movies. Right. And now that I've seen some of the movies and I went, oh, that's why this. Did you watch is- Avatar? No, that's what I was going to say. This looks like a movie that I need to see before the park right. opens yeah. to understand the Why they're tall and blue and yes. they have blue shovels. Yeah, I kind of want to know that. They plug really their hair into the flying horse. <laughs> they you know? do. They don't have blue shovels in the movie. Okay. Just so you know. That that's just the, for digging the hole to start digging. And the bad guys right. with bulldozers are going to knock everything down, and it's their job. to they, They're trying to fix it. Spoiler alert. Kind of Time like, will tell. Time will tell. Kind of like... Um, Cali River Rapids. Craig, do you like this movie? Um, what movie? Avatar. Storyteller I, Craig. I liked it better when it was Pocahontas. <laughs> I'm kind of a storyteller. <laughs> you like Avatar better than Pocahontas? Yeah, it is basically the exact. Is it same the same story? Yes, yeah. pretty much. Well, it's a, it's a it's a timeless theme of you know oh, protecting it's that story. natural environments. Do they sing? They do. Colors of the wind, the exact songs, just around the river bend. But the only, yeah. the only color is blue. Only in blue. <laughs> just just a around the river bend. All right. Okay. Yeah. We really went afar on that one. Our third news story: Four Seasons Resort Orlando at Walt Disney World Resort opening summer 2014. Just want to warn everybody that this is from a press release, so if it sounds Not stilted like towards oh, the Four Seasons, that's why. Located just minutes from the Magic Kingdom Park, Epcot, Disney's Animal Kingdom theme park, and Disney's Hollywood Studios, and easily accessible to numerous area attractions, Four Seasons Resort Orlando is set to open in the summer of 2014. It is now taking reservations for arrivals beginning in August of 2014 with an introductory stay longer third night free promotion that's ideal for families, couples, and friends getaways. They have a group value offer. That includes savings on golf, spa, and more with a minimum of 10 rooms booked per night with rates beginning at just $229 per night. Uh, Highlights of this resort will be uh, rooms with a very special view. Um, (laughs) You'll have spectacular vistas over the Magic Kingdom, (coughs) nightly fireworks displays, uh, 444 rooms and suites decorated in a fresh and contemporary style with a 16th floor royal suite. Ooh. Those, there's going to be world-class culinary experiences. We will be the judge of those. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's going to be a spa inspired by the natural beauty of Central Florida's flora and fauna. The world cl- world-class spa will offer... <laughs> that was intense. <laughs> the world-class spa will offer 18 luxurious treatment rooms, including two bungalows for private retreats. Explorer Island... A five-acre playground packed with fun for all ages uh, includes a 7,590-square-foot family pool, very specific, with a lazy river winding around a ruined... A lazy river? <laughs> lazy river. A lazy river winding around a ruined mansion, climbing wall, water slides, and there's going to be a Kids for All Seasons program. Uh, a couple more things. Uh, you know, golf courses, of course, uh, tennis, fitness center, adult pool, surrounded by private cabanas, uh, a lot of conference space, uh, blah, 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 blah. And one of the things that caught my eye is they're going to have the adult haven. Okay. Uh, the adults only pool is called the Oasis. Uh, interrupted lap pool, poolside cocktails, napping in private cabanas. Uh, quiet and tranquility. I guess it means because there's not going to be any kids there. Um, or flora and fauna. <laughs> there won't be any flora and fauna. Napping in cabanas. So it sounds like what they're going to do is they're going to do a adults only pool area. That's pretty which cool. Which is interesting. Now, I is have that- a question. They had friends getaways. Did friends have a capital F? <laughs> they did. Like it's the going to be like Russ and Rachel are going to come with yeah. you. <laughs> Joey. And there's a ruined mansion. The lazy river is going to wind around a ruined mansion. What does that like mean? A, I think it sounds I like a southern know. plantation to me. Well, what is that documentary? Uh, Grey Gardens. Yeah, Grey Gardens. Gardens. Yeah. Right in the middle Cats of the lazy river. I, mean, <laughs> I know, me too. That it's, would be awesome. That would be good. If it was so what is you could the, do the actual... maneuver in the pool. You could <laughs> do a maneuver. What is... Little Edie will host. <laughs> <laughs> She'll wear that little scarf. 
Um, what, now, what is the uh, actual location of this? Where, yeah. where on property is this? You know where the where Golden Oaks is? Yes, it's back behind back Fort behind, Wilderness. Yeah, it's back Go there. to the fourth floor of the Contemporary and mm-hmm. look towards Fort Wilderness. Okay. You can't miss, you can't miss it. It's, okay. What's really weird is how it messes up the view out there. Right. It's so it's all trees. That vaguely wilderness view. It's not wilderness. I think I've seen that from Fort Wilderness itself now. Um, But that's a great location, you know. It is a great location. And they're talking about, you know, they're right on the corner of property, so they're talking about these rooms that are going to have spectacular views of the fireworks and stuff. I mean, being on that corner, you're going to be able to see at least the Magic Kingdom in Epcot. It is going to be a fantastic location, and I'm sure it's going to have a lot of services for Disney. I'm sure they're going to sell tickets and things like that. Bus transportation. I don't know what the price is going to be, but the group rates starting at $229 a night are actually kind of high. Mm-hmm. When you look at some of the other resorts in the area that do it's conventions, a four yeah. right? It's a Four Seasons, right? Absolutely. I am looking forward to the little Edie pool. <laughs> <laughs> the what? The little Edie pool <laughs> with the Laser River going around. <laughs> the Laser River. <laughs> All right. Well, that'll do it for the news. If you're all done making fun of me, yes. Well, we're never done with that, honey. All right. <laughs> Well, cool. Well, thank you very much, John, for that. We are going to move on to uh, Roundtable Rapid Fire, and I do believe John has something that he wants to share. All right, I do. I want to do a shameless plug. Okay. Dreams Villas of Orlando. We have 2015 prices loaded into our system. Uh, If in case you did not know, Kevin and I own Dreams Villas of Orlando. You can go to www.dreamsvillas.com, and right on the website, there is a uh, pricing calculator. We have no ruined mansions. No ruined <laughs> mansions. No laser rivers. Um, it's a nice villa, though. I've it seen is. It. You it's can well-wise. put in the dates you want to travel. You can put in your accommodations, and it'll immediately tell you availability and pricing information. Um, I'm proud of it. We do some really cool stuff. Everybody who comes and stays with us gets a gift. Sometimes if I'm feeling very generous, I give you extra gifts. Uh, It's just something we like to do. Um, We get really great feedback. You go to our site. You can read feedback from folks who have stayed. You get really positive feedback. People like it. I have someone, actually more than one person, a couple people who have stayed with us every year since we've opened. Wow. And when was that? uh, 2006. (coughs) Was it really? Wow. Yep, we've been seven, eight years now. Oh my wow. gosh, I didn't yeah. realize that. The good location too. Yeah, close to the parks. Yeah, I agree, but I'm a bit partial. <laughs> so go to dreamsvilles.com. Um, if you're staying off property, I think this is the way to stay off property. Got a full kitchen. You got mm-hmm. room for everybody to spread out, so you're not on top of each other. There is a tiki bar at the pool too. Yeah, oh, they built a tiki bar, which we understand is very nice. We've never been, and the drinks are very cheap. Really. That's what I understand. Okay. Like two dollars for a beer. And how do you get in there? Um, there's no, <laughs> John's got to let you in the gate. Actually, oh, okay. There's no actually. Yeah, if you get into the front gate where the security guard is, You're good to go. Are you just going to go and drink at the tiki bar for yeah. two dollars a yeah. beer? Classy. Yeah, it is classy. <laughs> All right, dreamsvillas.com. All right. Well, thank you, John. Kevin? I have some information about Adventures by Disney. They're going to release 2015 dates in late April or early May. We haven't been given an actual release date, but we're going to gear up for that. And we've told you before that our adventure for the summer, the July trip, is sold out. We have a couple of spaces left available if anybody would like to travel in July. And I've told you, no, you couldn't get a room. There are a couple of rooms. We had some people who had to back out. So if you would like to join Teresa and Kathy. And you know you do. Yeah. You know you do, right? I'm sitting here resting on my mic. Oh, yeah. she'll, she'll I'm going to swallow her mic. She's good. <laughs> You know, it's It'll gonna be, be little, fun. It'll they be will have lasers. Trip. Hands off. Okay. A little scary because Kathy and Teresa will be traveling and they'll be by themselves. Running <laughs> well, no, the there's other people traveling with no, us. No, I mean you're gonna be. There's not gonna be any adult supervision. <laughs> oh, there's not gonna be any like owners. Like 53 is not old enough. To, okay, we got this. No got owners this, of right? dreams unlimited travel. Does that mean travel. we have to behave this time? Right. Okay. Why don't you give me your credit card? You're going to be <laughs> Scoutmasters. Scoutmasters. <laughs> so, Den Mothers. On my honor. So, Kevin, for somebody who doesn't know anything about Adventures by Disney, what's the best way for them to kind of, you know, dip their feet into the pool? Go Call on. me. Call okay. me and give me your credit card number. I will push you into the pool. <laughs> this is actually, these backstage magics are really the best way to adv- to get into the idea of what Adventures by Disney yeah. is like. First, also, of all, they're, okay. first of all, they're the least expensive of all the trips. Mm-hmm. 
Second is that they are within the United States, so people are, don't have to worry about traveling overseas. Um, and it's Disney related, which is really what a lot of Disney fans right. want to do. It's really awesome for the Disney fan. And I also want to just say, too, I know I'm partial, but I think traveling with us is really the best way to do it. Because not only are you traveling with Disney fans, you're traveling with people you know. We're all Disney fans. We're all crazy. And we try to do some extra stuff for folks. So we think this is the best way to dip your toe into the ABD waters. And then inevitably people book other trips. And I'll mention, because Kevin told me, told us this before we went on our first ABD trip, that be prepared to make lifelong friends. And I went, nah, these are just people on a trip. And don't you consider the people we went on the last one? Oh, my, yes. Lifelong yes. friends. It's very cool. much a shared experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It is. And you sort of bond with the people you travel you with. You're seeing things that they're going to go back and tell their families about, but their families didn't see it. You did. Uh, one of the other things is we always set up a discussion thread on the sub forum, the Diz Unplugged podcast sub forum has a bunch of threads for all of the upcoming trips right. and the past trips. So if you're asking about how someone can get to know this, yeah. I would go back and read one of the, just the threads about people who had planned a trip on the Backstage Magic before this one. It gives you a great idea of the thought process of the people who are going. We've also done several reports on it. You guys did one in your outside the parks thing. Beyond the you parks. Did the backstage yeah, the magic. Parks. John and I have done reports on them quite a bit. Okay. They are, these are very fast, very full trips. This is not, I'm going to have time to lay by the pool. Yeah. You can carve that out if you want to. However, you can lay by a pool anywhere. If you're going right. to be in Disneyland, go to pool. Disneyland. Um, if you have any questions about this or want any more information, Kevin at Dreams Unlimited Travel, and I'll be happy to help you. All right, cool. Well, thank you very much, Kevin. We're going to move on to Teresa, who has a wonderful rapid fire for us. What was my rapid fire? Oh, um, Disboard's Welcome <laughs> Center. Hush. We switched the days up a little bit. Yeah. We used to be closed Tuesdays and Wednesdays, but now that the magic is back in port, we're opening up on Mondays and closed Tuesdays and Wednesdays. So I'm out there every Monday now. Um, hours are 10 to 5 during the week and 9 to 3 on the weekends. And there's snacks. And there's snacks mm-hmm. and Coffee drinks. And- Coffee and... So come by and visit. And, and fun stories, apparently. Yeah. We always have fun when we're out there. You know? Yeah. Okay. No. Cool. That's, that was just it. My hours If changed. you go in, Teresa will show you her tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> you have to guess where it is first, though. Well, rumor is a tattoo place is opening up in our same little block. So it'll be easier to run down there on my lunch hour. <laughs> Get, <laughs> Get some updated. new tats. Yeah. yeah. Can we just see if he'll make like a Diz Unplug tattoo and put it on like his file of what he can make? Yeah. Oh, wouldn't that be cool? That would be cool. Your free gift. Run down and <laughs> get it permanently put on your whatever. <laughs> on your whatever. <laughs> okay, then. All right. Well, thank you, Teresa. Uh, Kathy. Mine is that Hollywood Studios has taken away two of the uh, smoking areas <sighs> uh, outside Lights, Motors, Action, and the Hollywood Brown Derby. They're gone. Those are my two favorites. Stop Mine smoking. Too. Yeah. Do you think that's where we're going? We're going for no parking, no smoking inside a park ever? I do. If if not that, then they'll limit it to one each or something like that. Uh, Before they get to no smoking, they'll limit it to one place. Does that bother you? Uh, Not necessarily. Does it feel like it's an an invasion on your rights? No, no, not necessarily. I feel like if, you know, if I'm going to go smoke somewhere, then, you know, if if I'm going to, you know, go smoke somewhere then i can go wherever it is that disney you know tells me i need to do it in their property i have no problem with that okay. you know um so no i'm not i'm not too worried about that how um, crowded are the the last time i was in a smoking area was a number of years ago and there was hardly anybody there so does it make a difference that they took away too well it just you know it just depends on the day and the crowd levels uh you know for a big park like epcot you know where, you know, if you get stuck in the World Showcase, that can be kind of annoying if you have to go back to the front of the park. But for, you know, Hollywood Studios, everything's so close to, to everything. You can always find a way. And those, and those two are, you know, um, they're, they're 
prime locations to uh, exp- you know expand on that area, like right outside the Brown Derby. You know, they can make that into kind of like a picnic area or something. Right. And uh, what was the other one? Uh, that outside of Lights Motors Action. Lights Motors Action is right beside like food carts. So that that, yeah. uh, that space never made sense to me anyway. How long so, have you smoked? I don't want to get into all that. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was so sincere. I think you should be able to extinguish your cigarettes on the hat. I think you should be able to just grind Until it them. goes away. Right. That's what I think. Yeah. I think you stopped smoking on the day you went subscribed from the magazine, right? Right. That's exactly. how you cope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's Smokers Insider. Yeah. Trying to get a picture of your world away from the table. Yeah. Justin, well, on. thank you. She's trying to get to know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> She's pretending to care. Yeah. I love it. Okay. Some of our chatterati are trying to start a Kickstarter to go on the backstage magic. <laughs> good luck with oh, that. Good. I don't think it works that way. Yeah. <laughs> Can you money? Okay, well, thank you, Kathy. Oh, you're welcome. Yes. Uh, Sean, I know you have something. All right. Um, so the past few days, Disney Parks Blog has kind of been teasing one of the new floats for the uh, Festival of Fantasy Parade in Magic Kingdom. Uh, it's scheduled to open up. This is the tentative date, but March 16th is supposed to be the day that it, it debuts. But they've kind of been teasing this mystery float that wasn't announced in the concept art. And uh, so it kind of started like with these really close-up shots of kind of metal-y things. And there was like weird green glowing smoke and stuff. But it turns out it's going to be a steampunk Maleficent uh, float that is just the dragon um, form of Maleficent and will somehow fit into the, the theme of the parade. So I think it looks really cool. The design I think it is looks fantastic. Great. It does. Um, However, there's going to be those mirrored castles all around the dragon. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if Maleficent, like the, the face character, is going to be on the float itself or if it's just going to be the dragon, but... Well, also, the movie's cool. coming out. The movie's supposed to be so out So it's going to be Angelina Jolie on the float. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. She'll make sure yeah. that she's there every day at 3 o'clock. Her and her kids. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> running around. Minute, <laughs> Dressed up as Avatar. Maleficent. <laughs> Maleficent. She is the dragon, right? So she She, she can't be the dragon yeah. on right. the float with her. Yeah, I guess, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I would just be Whoever wins the ice cream medal at thinking? the winter I don't know. Is be on the float. There's no way she could be there. I'm just trying to be logical about this. Yeah, I agree. I, yeah. It is very logical. I just hope that there's enough connection. I guess when the new movie comes out, maybe. Yeah, maybe it's more dragon centric. I just yeah. really, really, really oh, like the design of this float. The, some of the close up cool. pictures I've seen, it's very steampunk, kind of, you know, really, uh, you know, a lot of gears and metal and all this uh, old timey looking uh, stuff. To it, it's uh, it's really cool. I, I don't know too much about the parade as a whole. I, I don't think they've released a lot of information. Um, there have been two photos that leaked of the uh, Tangled float and mm-hmm. the Cinderella float, and they both look beautiful. Yeah, but they're both kind of like wood carved floats. I think okay. actually a uh, Peter Pan one might have surfaced also. Okay, just so in the past a uh, couple hours this morning. So, yeah, there was a yeah. site that had four different pictures of the floats that are coming, and they all look beautiful, really detail oriented, and. They look nice. It seems like this is, even though the style, it's clearly very stylized, it seems like for the afternoon parade that uh, the Magic Kingdom is going to have, it's very classic Disney. You know, the the characters and the uh, the themes of the parade are very classic Disney. It's not like, hey, we're having a party, let's all dance. And there is nothing wrong with classic Disney. Yeah. No. Uh, I want to hear the music that comes out right. that accompanies this. It just reminds me a lot more of like Sensational mm-hmm. over yeah. at Disneyland instead sure. of... That's very detailed also. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. Do we have any idea where these floats are being produced or who's making them or where they are now physically? Taiwan. I don't... No, I don't. <laughs> Taiwan. <laughs> seems far away. Um, just I, curious if there's some... I think some of them are here already. I think are some yeah. are, are here in Florida. I think those photos that leaked of the other three um, are backstage Magic Kingdom, probably. Yeah. So. Cool. Interesting. Yeah, it'll be exciting. All righty. Well, thank you, Sean, for uh, telling us about that. Now, you guys uh, also had a chance to head out to Epcot and check out the new restaurant. Did, did Craig, Craig have, have a rapid rap- fire? Oh, I'm sorry, Craig? Um, I didn't. I was going to mention, though, uh, that... Right now, Sean and I have been working on a bunch of universal stuff, so I know it's not really popular with a lot of people. They think we should only focus on Disney stuff, since the D and the I and the S is kind of in the name, but uh, Universal's really stepping up their game, and it's time that we're going to focus a little more on them and, uh, you know, show what they have to offer, too. So just be on the lookout for stuff coming. Stuff. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Interesting stuff. And I would just want to, dance. today was the first day that off-site people could go to Magic Kingdom and do uh, fast passes. Oh. 
Okay. Yeah, actually, there's a pretty big rumor going around, or maybe not even so much a rumor anymore, but the end of January will be the end of Legacy Fast Pass. Wow, that quick. Yeah. 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 So uh, Magic Kingdom, I think, started today, um, and then I think Epcot and then uh, Studios will be the final two parks. So that test at Animal Kingdom must have been successful Mm -hmm. for them to roll these out. I think that's the huge, that's the biggest uh, kind of struggle that they've had especially with people criticizing the whole thing is yeah. double dipping, you know, all that whole controversy and stuff. So Kathy, are they doing, is it a my Disney experience for offsite guests or is it uh, fast? You can only plus? do a day of, you'll have to go to the kiosk and then you can look at it in your, my Disney experience, oh. but you have to do it at the day kiosks. Out. So I'm going to go over tomorrow and check it out. Interesting. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, thank you for that. Uh, like I was saying, uh, Sean and Craig had a chance to head over to Morocco at Epcot uh, the other day and see the new restaurant they've been building, the Spice Road Table. And so they had some information on that they want to share. So I'll leave it up to you guys. Okay. Well, do you want to start with the, the short video? Yes. Yeah, so let's watch it. Absolutely. Yeah, let's do that. Um, Shall yeah. we? Press play. This is like watching a film strip in school. <laughs> Somebody turn off the light. <laughs> Are we muted? How's that? Awesome. Yeah. And then there was that. <laughs> there was that. And we both got henna tattoos. Yeah. So you know, just just looking at the video, it's it's clear that not only have they added this restaurant, but they've obviously changed some of the the food stands and the merchandise locations and stuff. So, um, so basically, what they did was they built this big building on the lagoon side. So mm-hmm. it's right kind of on the water um, that houses the new restaurant, Spice Row Table. It has the old uh, Gifts of Morocco shop. It has the Art of Henna, and it also has a new juice bar kind of food and beverage stand that has um, brand new ice cream options, some like specialty alcoholic drinks, and I think there's a couple non-alcoholic too. Um, and then they sell like beer there too, and just your traditional like water and stuff. But it's a nice addition right there on the yeah. on that side of the water. Are there windows facing 
into the lagoon, so mm-hmm. people will want to be there for fireworks, there's I indoor, assume. Yeah, there's indoor seating that face the lagoon, and there's a huge outdoor patio that's really nice that's right on the water. Now, I know with the construction wall up, it made it impossible to see the lagoon at all. How, how much does this building really kind of block the view? From, from people lagoon? walking a, a, pr- a large bit. Yeah. I mean, yeah. But at the same time, uh, as long as you stake out your your place before illuminations or even during the day, mm-hmm. you're going to get a nice, a really decent view uh, yeah. for anything that you want to see at any time of the day. Um, I it, it didn't seem like it took up that much more room than the stands and other stuff they had over there before, yeah. but I don't remember now what it looked like well, before. They had the boat there. launch area and they had a couple shops. It's right but up against the boat launch area. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the, kind of one the thing The little now. dancing people. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, They built their own stage over across. Oh. Yeah, it's in that yeah. grassy knoll area. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The grassy knoll. All right. <laughs> it's always a good place. So did you guys actually eat the food or did you just take pictures? Of it? <laughs> oh, no, we ate a lot. So how was it? Tell us. Um, so the menu is kind of mostly alcohol. Um, there is a page of food. So you enjoyed um, it. So tapas, of course I did. Um, <laughs> it's, they advertise it as being Mediterranean small plates, so basically tapas. Okay. Um, so they have a selection of mostly meat things. Um, there is some seafood, and then there are two vegetarian options. But I'd say there are about a dozen things available here. Yeah, and uh, um, one of the things we started off with were aperitifs. Uh-huh. Um, and... Those were our pre-11 o'clock. Okay, yeah, so this was 11 o'clock. <laughs> yeah. uh, and okay. then Sean also had a giant glass of sangria, too. I saw we the picture it. of sangria. I mean, it was like a jug of sangria. No, we didn't get the picture. Okay. But yeah. it was a big glass. But that's what we started with. The sangria, I thought it was average. I thought it okay. tasted just a little bit better than the stuff they serve at hoop doo and That was my reaction at first, but then as I kept drinking it, I don't know if I had just stirred it and got like the flavor on the bottom or if my... My taste was just a little less discerning after drinking a whole glass of sangria at 11 a.m. But Kevin, while we were watching the video, I think you asked a legitimate question, which is... Which surprised us all. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. Which is, what one of these items is going to be the next big thing that oh, you have to have? they were scooping the ice cream and they had exotic ice cream. You know what? It, th- that would be the thing. The ice cream outside in that yeah. juice bar. It's not part of the restaurant. That's just a stand outside. But there's five flavors, and I'll read them to you. Um, but they're like really exotic, unique ones. Uh, pistachio orange blossom, orange honey walnut, chocolate cinnamon, green tea, and almond rose water. So those are all five almond specialty rose ones. Rose so is this going to be the new Dole Whip? Is this going to be a thing that I don't know if it'll be a Dole Whip, but it's something unique that people can't get anywhere else. Yeah, yeah and we tried the... Uh, the Chocolate cinnamon mm-hmm. and one other one, the orange we, honey walnut. The orange honey walnut, and it's you get two scoops for four ninety nine. Yeah, okay. so it's not. And it, it's priced. excellent. Oh, I mean, that doesn't seem to be a bad price. It's no, delicious, especially yeah. for Disney. Yeah. And and you said the tapas food was was good. The food was good. So, like Craig said, we started with the drinks, the sangria, and uh, the aperitif, and then they they have two samplers that are sixteen dollars a piece. One is kind of meat uh, center centric, and then one is the seafood one. Um, I definitely preferred the meat one. It's called the Tingus sampler. And it has the lamb slider, the lamb sausage, and the uh, harissa chicken roll, which is the it's pretty um, well known for at food and wine. It's pretty popular for that. Um, it's kind of like an egg roll with like corn yeah. and chicken. Yeah. I saw and all spice. three of those in the video. They looked great. Yeah, yeah. And the seafood was kind of a mixed bag. They had uh, the little balls that you saw if you watched the video. Uh, those were cod. Cod? They were called cod croquettes. Yeah, cod, cod croquettes. Yeah. And it basically tasted like a mix of uh, crab cakes and uh, fish sticks. They were basically just fancy fish sticks. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, it was very strange. The mussels dish that was in there that kind of looked like a beef stew. Yeah, it was... Oh, you have the... Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the one in the middle, that's the mussels. It was... Terrible. It was disgusting. I didn't like it. Okay. I don't like mussels, though. Disgusting. So, but disgusting. I probably would have liked that. I can't imagine that a lot of people thought it was good. But on the uh, plate, the calamari, that was by far the best. Uh, it's some of the best calamari that I've ever had wow. in general. What was the price of that again? $16. $16. Put that picture back up. I will say this. Holy it, smokes. It was God pricey. And, and this isn't a place that you're going to go to have a meal because you're not going to fill up. You're not going to fill up. This is like a snack that you would get with drinking. Yeah, and then we also even ordered two more uh, little you appetizers were hungry. on it, too. We were starving. Yeah. And what else did you get? Well, we got the hummus plate, which was came with uh, two different types of hummus, and it was good. I mean, the original was your standard original hummus, but then the other one was like this the little fire-roasted tomato hummus. I'm, I'm not sure exactly what it was. It didn't even say it in the menu, but... 
it was uh, some of the best hummus. It was really that good. I've ever good had. Hummus, and then hummus. you get like a big pile of uh, Kalamata olives and little gherkin kind of things. Little gherkin. How much is yeah. that? That was like ten dollars, I believe. Um, it was definitely pricey, but everything better there than was. I think better than that other thing for sixteen bucks or seventeen. Yes. Yeah. That that seemed like a big ripoff to me. Well, two fish balls. Well, okay. So here, compared to this, <laughs> if you want balls. one lamb slider, it's nine dollars. Whoa! Oh, so yeah. you're only getting one of those. So to get the a sampler, slider? Mm-hmm. so to get all three of them for sixteen bucks, it seems like a good deal to try the different things. Wow! We tried the uh, spicy garlic shrimp, which was not spicy because of like the heat or that like looks- peppers. It was good, but they used four dozen cloves of garlic in this thing. <laughs> <laughs> like, wow! It was insane. And then they give you like a little bread to dip. A uh, little pumpkin bread on top. Maybe? Yes, it's yeah. pumpkin. Yeah. Well, and the worst part is we had it first, so it kind of just ruined our Taste palate balance. for the right. entire rest of the meal. But uh, all the food was excellent. And then they also have three desserts there. Wait, are, all the food was excellent, but one was disgusting? Except, I, I mean, someone's going to like it. I don't the like muscles. it. The mussels. It was just so fishy. And usually when you get mussels, they're in the little shells. So it's not so overpowering. But, like, I picked up, like, three of them with my fork, and it was just, like, overpowering when I okay. tasted it. Yeah. The, but then they had three specialty desserts. Uh, we only got one because we wanted to try the ice cream, but we chose the one they highlighted the most, and that was the uh, chocolate pyramid. So that's uh, some chocolate mousse with, like, cocoa powder dusted over top of it, and then almond-flavored ice cream with dark chocolate layered on top of it. Okay. Um, it it was good. It was but- re- I, I'm so sick of Disney just like resorting to chocolate mousse or chocolate cake at every single restaurant that it kind of. Well, I thought this was a little different because you cut it open and two types of like chocolate goose oozed out of <laughs> it. There was like a white chocolate nice. syrup. Goose, plural. The oozing yeah. pyramid. No, but it was actually, I thought that was a, a cool a cool Which part. sounds and like you need salve. <laughs> it's oozing pyramid and fish balls. Salve. <laughs> Salve. 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 It sounds so what exotic. Was, what was kind of like the atmosphere there? Did it, you know, it's a hummus place. I mean, not a hummus place. It's a tapas, uh, tapas, tapas yeah. place. Did it feel kind of like a bar atmosphere or more like a restaurant? No, I got to be honest. The inside was incredibly cramped. Okay. I yeah. much rather would have preferred to sit outside. Um, the inside, they had too many tables and it was kind of awkward. They were set up as tables of six. So like a four to, uh was it a four top and then a, a single? It was like they like had it set up that it could be a six top right against the window, but then they would also split off each table based on what they needed. And then so. it was like the Golden Globes. You could not walk through the restaurant because <laughs> it was so crowded. Yeah. Um, but, but Luckily, not, you didn't have to accept an award. Well, the, the atmosphere there was a bit strange. It just it didn't feel like a restaurant, but it didn't feel like a bar, and it didn't fit like, feel like a place where you could just stop in real quick, have a bite, and then leave after that. Um and I went back later at night after we went there at about six o'clock and we got there at 11 and at six during the dinner rush there, it was maybe half full. So I don't know if yeah. people are really taking to it yet. I haven't been back yet to check it out, but it is expensive and it's a lot of strange food for some people. So I don't know it if it'll be successful. More, it seems more mainstream than the full service restaurant there. It seems yeah. like it would be more welcoming to you know, my palate at least. Did they close the Tangerine Cafe? Oh, no. No, that's okay, open. Good. Right yeah. across the street. Do we know if this is going to be on the dining plan? I don't know how There's it could no, be. No dining plan and no discount, so no tables in Wonderland either. Wow. Yeah. 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 Do you want to try it, John? Yeah, we'll do We'll do a full review someday. That could be good. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it sounds interesting. That's the way we like to eat. We like tapas. We think that's a great way to, to eat, but I don't know. It's really expensive. It seemed really expensive. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it it was. I I thought it was worth it. I, I enjoyed my time there. I probably wouldn't go back uh, for a while unless it was the only thing I could find uh, to eat at Epcot. Like if I couldn't get another normal dining reservation, I think that's what a lot of people are going to use it for. You think it'll be like a drinking destination? Uh, oh, I think so. Yeah, drinking, definitely. Uh, they had a really wide variety, and we didn't even get into like the wine flights that they had. There were wine flights. Especially. They have like eight signature cocktails that are just for this restaurant. Um, they're kind of like sweet ones, so we didn't order any of those. Um, but then they have all those aperitifs. They have uh, the sangria. You can get it in white, red, or sparkling. You can order it by the Ooh. pitcher. Oh, wow. So I got to tell you, this, this totally appeals to me. Yeah. yeah. I like the things you talked about. I would like to try it. And we love Tangerine Cafe. As a matter of fact, it's one of our favorite places to go in Epcot. I think the prices are really here's, reasonable. Here's what I would do. I would go spend $10 and get enough food at Tangerine Cafe to <laughs> fill up and then just go have a drink and maybe a snack over at Spice Road Table. Are the tables out back open to the public? 
What do you, you mean? You, you have, have to be seated. You have to be seated through the restaurant. Yeah, to get you a can't table. just go set. It's not open. Oh, okay. No. You have to go through the hostess. Um, so there's no reservations accepted, but it is a first come first serve. So you have. I mean, to go you're not going to go get your food at Tangerine Cafe and no. go sit out on the water. No. no. Yeah. <laughs> That's prime real estate. I just. Yeah. I wasn't sure what the layout was. Yeah. Yeah, so it was very good. I, I hope that it uh, does well. Like it's it's in soft opening right now, so it's not even technically open. Um, I would expect it in the next couple of weeks for them to work out some kinks. Maybe it will involve them in lowering the prices. I don't know. But I hope we'll see. Cool. All right. Well, thanks guys for sharing that, and uh, thanks everybody for being here at the show today. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it, and uh, make sure you uh, stay tuned for our next segment, uh, which is going to be Arendelle Prince and Chris uh, Walthers uh, talking to us about the Walt Disney World Marathon Weekend. So, until then, we hope you have a wonderful week, and thanks for watching the Diz Unplugged. <laughs>